Hi everybody and welcome to video one in my Forget Me Not series. This is my design team project for Line.Arrow for May of 2024. Now, um, she, um, Natalie has released two kits this month, uh, Forget Me Nots, and there's another kit and I don't remember the name of it, but they're both in a blue theme. And you can go over to her YouTube channel, which is um, youtube.com forward slash at line.arrow. And of course that link will be below. And see the flip through of this kit and also um, the first challenge. So the first, or actually she may have two separate videos. She may have a flip through because there's two kits. And then she may have the first challenge video too, and that should be up as well pretty soon. Um, the challenges are going to run from today, which is May 4th, and then it will, this is Saturday, and it'll run through the following Friday. So that's going to be the 10th and then on so on and so on for the rest of the month. There's going to be three weeks of challenges, and then there's one week that you get to catch up and get everything done and get them all posted. Now there are contests um, for the challenges, well, along with the challenges and the participating um, Facebook groups that are doing this is of course the Line.Arrow Junk Journal group, then there's Sweet Pea Papers Facebook group, um, the Line.Arrow one is also a Facebook group obviously. So there's Sweet Pea Papers Facebook group, Junk Journal Tutorials and More Facebook group, Two Sister Jam Facebook group, and new this month is Savage Arm, Savage Art Facebook group, Savage Arm. That's too funny. I can't believe I said that. Anyway, each one of us will be um, hosting the challenges and you can enter the drawings for each of our um, Facebook groups by posting pictures of things that you've made, whether they're challenges or not, um, using either this kit or the other kit, or there's going to be freebies every week that you can get from Line.Arrow, um, either her Ko-Fi shop or her YouTube or her Facebook group, and um, they'll come out new every week on the Saturday that the new week's challenge will come out and I don't have any of the freebies right now so I'm not using any of them as of today. <clears throat> I'm not going to do a flip through the kit because uh, Natalie does one on her channel uh, so I'm not going to you know just duplicate it. Now I do want to talk to about, to you about a couple things and usually I talk to you about these but some of them may be new to my channel. This is a tall slim journal which is awesome and if you look at the um, paper, you'll see that it has large borders on either side and a smaller border on the top and the bottom. My printer prints out a double border on one side and I don't know why, but it should be a small border and a small border on each of the opposite sides. So now the reason that is, is because Natalie lives in a country that uses the European size measurements and this is a four, eight, five. I'm not sure which. Anyway, um, this is a U.S. size paper. So in order to have it print out properly and not lose part of the image um, by having it magnify up to fit in the page, turn off your fit to page and also turn off your borderless. I'm sorry, you can't do it borderless. You see how close this is to the border? If it comes forward enough to fill the sides in, then you're going to lose part of the image and you don't want to lose part of this beautiful frame around here. Okay, so that's that. Also, um, I print on the backs of all mine in case I'm going to use it as a card. I know it um, wastes ink on the ones I'm not, but I do it on all of them to get ahead of the game. Um, so. The uh, backing sheets are in my printer right now because I'm getting ready to print on the back of them and then I realized I had recorded the first part of this video wrong. Um, so um, yeah, so I had to redo it and this is the redo. But um, so these I'm going to print on the back with the um, backing papers. These as well. 
and the writing pages. I'll probably use, there's a tan one that looks like a bunch of pieces of paper all layered on top of each other and that's probably what I'll use for the writing pages. Here's one with lines. They're upside down because I just kind of did this real quick. These are going to be printed with the um, cream colored backing pages so that you can write on all of them. And then this particular one that has an envelope is going to be printed with something different like one of the pattern backing papers that matches this so that when you open the envelope you see um, a pretty image and not just the uh, plain background color. Okay, so um, and then this one here since it's pockets I don't have to print on the back of it at all. Alright, so that's it for this part of the video. We're going to make a manila folder tall slim um, journal and I'm going to have to kind of look at some measurements and stuff and see what we can do. I only have legal sized manila folders left so uh, my measurements are going to be based on that but we're just going to you know whack off what's too long anyway so it'll end up being just like using a regular size manila folder which you definitely can use when we're going to do this project. Okay and again this is at line.arrow in Etsy at the Etsy um, shops place. <laughs> yeah, that's where it is. And um, this kit and the other blue kit were, I'll be, will be on sale for this month. And um, usually she's having a smaller sale on the item, rest of the items in her shop. Possibly not, I don't know. But usually the ones that she's um, spotlighting are usually 30% off. Okay, so I'll be back in just a second with the rest of this video and we'll start building the base. Here's part two. Um, wait a minute. I've got the ephemera, but I don't have it cut out because um, I've decided to use vintage photo. I've got some, I've got this little bitty border. Let's see if I can show it to you. This little bitty border right here out on my stamp block and then I've also got this beautiful butterfly stamp I get these from Timu you don't even need the uh, stamping block to use these so they're my favorites I've got seven of them and I discovered there's eight so I ordered one more uh, that's got a different pattern on it I decided to use butterflies because that would tie in with the butterflies in the kit and I don't have any bluebells on a stamp anywhere I looked. So we've got our vintage photo, we've got our papers which are gorgeous, look at that. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a tall skinny obviously, but I want to measure so that means I guess I have to cut one in half, don't I? I want to measure how wide I need. So it should be five and a half. I mean, uh, four and a quarter plus a quarter. So that'd be four and a half. So I want an eighth of an inch all the way around. And then another inch for that stamp on the width not the height but just the width okay so let me shoot I didn't mean to do that but cut this one in half and I've got a couple of manila folders these are legal size like I said that's all I've got left right now I have like 300 of them so I'm definitely not going to order the short ones Okay, so it's going to be this wide. So we're going to want about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Be here. And then it'll be here. Then on the side, I want another, whatever this is, plus just a smidge. 
There's the widest part. That's an inch and a quarter. So let's say, and I know that's going to be a lot of stamping, but I really like it and I've decided I want to do it. Okay, so another inch and a quarter, an inch and five eighths. I mean three eighths. So that's how wide I'm going to make it. Then I need enough. I'm going to do a tab if I do this. I mean I could, but it would really make it wide compared to the paper. I think I'm just going to do it this wide and then um, on a trial and see what it looks like and then if it doesn't look too funny we could add a tab look and see so let's cut it this wide here and this tall then put the paper on it and see what it looks like let's see if cutting off that much from the top lets me cut it off from the side and as usual we're going to save these So that's going to be not very slim, huh? I don't care. I know what I want. So we've got this here. Oh, that's not going to work, is it? Because even if I do it twice, Oh, that's all right. It'll cut off right about there. Try to cut it off at a whole butterfly. Okay. Let's see if I can figure this out. It's going to be there. Yeah, we've got too much width still. We could take another eight off. I left that extra. No, we'll save these two for for making pockets. All right, and put our oh cool, put our paper here and our stamp here. I think that'll work. And then I'm not going to stamp the top and the bottom. That's why we didn't leave the extra room. Okay, so now what we need to do is decide how many of these do we want to add together. Wow, that's really loud. Do we want to add together? And how many... So how many folders do we need and how many pages is that going to make? So I'm going to set this up here. Well, no, I'm going to set it to the side. Because I've got all this other stuff going on. Let's erase this. We don't want to see that. Let's cut another one this size. Cut it off, well you're going to have to because of the size of the paper trimmers, but cut the top off first so you've got that flip up and then cut the width off of that. In case for some reason I have such a big guillotine that you could cut it the other way. 
You know, I never could get guillotines to work very well for me. The paper seemed to slide. Should we make one more? I'd like to make two projects, one with the Bluebells kit and the other one with the other blue kit. Hmm. I think we can add one more. I've set aside X number of days. As you guys know me, I schedule ahead of time. And I record ahead of time. But I'm in the middle of organizing my big Christmas in July event. This will be the fourth annual one for Sweet Pea Papers. And um, I'm doing the graphics and you know, getting people on the list and all that good stuff. So, um, getting my YouTubers together. Got 25 now, so I think I'm going to stick with that round number. If you ever want, if you have a YouTube channel, you're watching this, and you ever want to be in on any of my collabs, I think I might start running a second one at least every year. Christmas in July and then something else. Maybe something in the spring. Or in the winter. I like winter journals. Then um, send me an email with your name, your Facebook name, your YouTube channel name, and your YouTube channel, and I'll put you on the uh, list of people to contact, you know, when I have a collab, because I have a list. I have a list. My list was outdated. Why does this look so tall? Looks a little tall, doesn't it? Did I just make a mistake on that one, or are they all the same height? Mm -mm, they're all the same. So let's take, I don't think I can do all three. I should be able to. I'm going to take a smidge off the top. Like going to the barber, right? Just a little off the top. Ugh, my charm was not happy, but it did it. Okay, so now let me try it. That looks better. Since we're not stamping these two sides, we're just going to ink them, then um, I don't want too much empty space around on the other three sides. Okay, okay. So we've got those three made. Now let's see what we're going to do. All right. I think instead of a pocket, Make sure you're looking at the three uh, gusset marks. And if you want to do um, the two flaps or three, then you need to um, do the part with the gusset. There's three lines, three little ridges. On top of the gusset, the three little lines on the other one. And to be consistent, we'll do it that way on that one as well. But I think on this one, since it's so tall, I think I would like to do 
thirds. Let's see how close to thirds I can get. Let's see how tall it is. It is ten and three quarters. Let's get the calculator. My little solar calculator. Ten point seven five divided by three. Three point five eight, so three and a half inches, let's call it. And then we'll just make the one in the center however big. We'll do three and a half down, three and a half up, and then the center one is going to be the center one with the little bit of the leftover, the eight tenths, three times eight. So it's going to be a quarter of an inch. It'll be a quarter of an inch bigger in the center or so. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. All right, so on this one, We're going to mark it three and a half in from the top. Let's do from the bottom and then flip the ruler over. Three and a half is going to be right here. And we're only going to cut over to this third gusset line and that's all and then three and a half from the bottom here. I'm going to draw a line so that I can cut. Alright, so that's the one cutting line. Now let's turn this around. leave it where it is. Let's turn the ruler around. And go down three and a half. That's not three and a half. at three and three quarters. Take a look at that again. One, two, three and a half. No, that was right. It just looked long. Three and a half. Three and a half. Those are not even. And then, yeah, that looks like it ended up a little bit bigger. Ended up three and three quarters, just like we thought. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut along these two lines. Just to the gusset. Take 
takes me a little bit to get it lined up straight in my shaky hands. Instead of the shakiest gun in the West, I'm the shakiest hands in the West. Okay. I'm going to erase our pencil marks. Now these are going to fold from this gusset in like so. So you're going to have to ink all around. You're going to have to ink the gusset here, the fold here, or no yes the fold here where the regular fold is in the manila folder and then around each of these edges and of course around this side and around this side so now when we add the next one on you have to make sure it's the right way so Let's lightly label this one, two, and just call it three, four. This is going to be glue. You know, we could, yeah, glue. This is going to be five. Then on this side, we could just glue it together. I'm trying to think, we could just glue it. Yeah, I'll use this tab to make a pocket and maybe another pocket. That would be kind of fun. We've got three of them. Okay, so these are our possible pockets. Trimmed it down. Then we've got one, two, three flips, and then these three scraps that actually might be able to be made into pockets easier. The tab's going to be just as wide, I believe, but it might be easier to cut it. I don't know. I don't think it would make any difference. Anyway, so let's keep these two. Oh, I guess it looks like we're going to keep them all. Okay, so we're going to glue those two. That means this is going to be open. Okay, this is going to fold like this. So we're going to have to keep our eye out on the stamping situation. I'm thinking I might do on these short pages, maybe I'll do two rows of those little vines or look for a bigger vine or maybe stencil. That would be kind of pretty. Stencil on every third, whatever pages are the short pages. So it would be this one and this one.
And then these next two Pocket. And we're going to glue them together. So this is going to be glue, 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 glue. And on the inside here, you know, it'd be kind of cool. Would to be would be to have a really tall belly band or a really tall side pocket, side pocket with a really ginormous card. So we'll do that. So this is going to be eight. This is nine. This will be 10, but it's also the back cover. And number one is also our front cover. Okay. So we're going to get this all inked and get it all stamped. And then I'm not sure what we're going to do after that. Um, I think I may stamp up the middle of this with that little IV thing after inking the edges. I think that would be cute. Right up the center. If I can get it lined up. I would like to take this this one, which is this one, and this one, and put them side by side. And that would fill up the uh, width. But the thing is, getting them in, all the way end to end. Oh, maybe I could just do it once in the center. Mm -mm. That wouldn't look good. All right, I'm going to think about it. You guys think about what you're going to do on yours. And um, remember to ink everything, and then um, we will come back when that's done, and I will try to figure out something to do. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do the cover first or last, so we may pop in here and um, do something. Maybe we'll do our big card right here in the front great big giant card um, and do that. Remember there will be the stamps on this edge. Let's see. That leaves quite a bit of width over there too, doesn't it? Since we've got our paper on here, this leaves a lot over here. So I think I'm going to need to find a third stamp. Let me look. I think I've got a leaf stencil. So many stencils, you guys would not believe. Okay, 
well, I guess I'll look off camera and see what I've got. This one might be pretty. And I have about at least 50 more stamps that I can go through. Is it a duplicate? I believe it is. Hasn't been used, so it goes in the pile of stuff. Oh, that one's written on. What about the other one? Anyway, okay, I'll do that off camera. And then when we come back, I'll show you which stencil I used. And then, um, yeah, and then I'll do that. And then that way we don't have to cut anything off the ends here. Um, I could. I could cut a little bit off. And then this wouldn't have to be any have any stamping or anything but we've got stamping around the edges on all the other ones so I feel like we should stamp along the edge of here or stencil the reason it doesn't go all the way to the edge is because we've folded it right here you see so we've only got from here plus our eighth here plus our eighth We could cut them off. Probably should cut them off. Hmm. All right, I'll decide off camera. Then we'll come back. We'll have a few minutes. Um, it looks like we'll have um, about 20 minutes or so. We'll get something done or get something started. And um, I will see you then. Okay, I'll be right back. So I've got everything done. Um, I've been interrupted like three or four times trying to get this recorded. So what we're going to do is get it put together and then I'm going to call it a video while I'm, while I'm ahead. What I did was I um, inked everything. As you can see, I inked all around. Then I went back and on the, the full size pages that were going to have the larger border, I used my big stamp along the edges so that's here and here then along the little ones because remember um, this has got this much shorter so the paper is going to be to here I stamped this little vine okay and then right here it went a little off the rails but I'm not the best stamper but it went perfect over here and over here okay well there's a gap but they're going to be dazzled so much by the rest of it, they're not going to notice. <laughs> this is another smaller page. So it got the little vines. And then um, this is a full size. This is the pocket. And I know you're wondering, why did she stamp that? Well, when you open the pocket to get the card out, you can see inside the pocket. A little bit so I thought well I'll just go ahead and stamp it I'm already stamping so um, I went ahead and did that I love this stamp these long stamps are just gorgeous and um, and I used the same one um, even though maybe I shouldn't have but I thought it kind of provided consistency plus my other ones were mushrooms and ferns and things and that wasn't really Bring. Wow, I hope you didn't hear that big noise. My neighbor dropped something on their floor. Um, and then this is going to go here. So to glue this together, it's going to take us about three seconds. <laughs> Hopefully. We're just going to glue the gusset area. Come on, glue. I haven't crafted in about four or five days. It's starting to get withdrawals. I just got sidetracked. So 
so of course I'm going to have to make a bunch of videos. <laughs> if I don't publish every day, then my videos are kind of, or my tutorials are kind of long. So then people kind of get behind and it ends up taking two months to do a book and nobody wants to spend two months doing a book. Maybe a mini album or something to learn how to do something super duper intricate. All right, I just want to make sure these edges are lining up. Oh, and ink the inside and the outside of your fold because you're going to see the brown along the edge. Come on you. And now this is the pocket. So we're just going to glue the two sides and then this side. I know why my glue's going so slow. It's cold in here. It's rainy outside, cold and gloomy. Maybe I'll take a nap if nobody interrupts me. You know, instead of recording more videos, I'll take a nap. If you knew my sleep habits, you'd be like, take a nap, take a nap. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to glue these two together. And then we'll have 10 pages. Now, on a side note, if you glue this one to where it opens this way, you'll end up with a flip-flap journal. Flip-flop journal. Or no, the middle one. If you do the middle one that way. Okay, now let's make sure. So, so this opens here. These open like this. I can't get a hold of it. My fingers are so cold. I have one, two, three. I could probably go ahead and put the magnets on those. And this is short. Oh, this isn't short. So I stamped the wrong stamp on that side. It's even on the bottom, but it's crooked at the pocket. It doesn't line up quite right. Darn it, I should have double checked that. It's only on this side that it's short. That's all right, you know what we'll do? We'll cut the papers a little bit wider on this one. Optical illusion, baby. Okay, and we got our pocket. And we have this, and we have this, and we have that. Okay, so we're going to need magnets on these. So let's go ahead and do that. Might as well. save us a little bit later on. So 
on any one one two three and then we'll need three on the other side as well let's see let's make sure they're down far enough to check and make sure the magnet wasn't going to be too close to the edge of the paper and make a bump on the edge. Just put a piece of tape face up. With the magnet. And then you close it. You rub on either side so the tape sticks. It's a little bit harder on the vanilla folder ones, but carried away with the tape there even though I tried to rescue it. Make it a little bit smaller. I guess farther out is better. We'll get more of it to stick. Yeah. Done. And then we'll be done for this video. We just have to remember on this one. And this one. going on here. Oh, the, the crease is just folded, that's all. Um, and I decided instead of inking or doing anything up the center, I was just going to put a piece of paper up through here and that would make it look more finished. It's just going to be right here and right here. And I'll put a piece of paper in between up in there. Okay, Let's see if I have any other notes.
Mm -mm. Nope. So when we come back, we may not start with the cover. I haven't decided how I'm going to close it yet. Um, I may just um, take some uh, sorry silk and bring it up, cross it, you know what I mean, and bring it back, or start from the front and bring it back, cross it over, bring it to the front, and tie it in a bow like you would a Christmas present. I might just do that. Um, and then that way we don't have to worry about a closure. Um, I still will put the pocket in, or the card in the pocket, and I'm going to put a tab at the top and a tab at the bottom because it's going to be such a long card, but I don't want to put one in the middle because we need to put our tie there. Okay? All right. Well, that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next video, and that will be just a second for you and a day for me. Okay, bye-bye.